Good evening, everyone. My name is Korwinski, and I'm the Vice President of Black Student Union, and I want to welcome you to the fifth annual Black Excellence Dinner. This is hands down one of my favorite events that Black Student Union does every year, and I'm excited to bring it to you this year. Hello, everyone. My name is Denight, and I'm the president this year. Thank you all very much for tuning in tonight. My eboard and I have worked incredibly hard to bring you this event with all the circumstances that we've had, but we hope that you guys will all still enjoy it regardless. Despite not being able to be in person tonight, it is still important that we all come together to celebrate the black excellence that we see on campus and to those who have left and found success in their walks of life now. To kick off this event, we will be honoring our ancestors with the Black National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing. Performing is our very own Houston Patton. Poet and author Maya Angelou once said, you may not control all the events that happen to you, but you can decide not to be reduced by them. Throughout history, we as a people have not had control over our plight, but we have refused to be simply reduced to our very own struggles. It has been through the sheer force of self-love, community, resilience, and self-determination that we have thrived and overcome the nightmares that are the reality of our struggles. Tonight, we honor the legacy of self-determination that resounds through our Hope's Black community. As Hope College students today, we are inspired and empowered by seeing those who started out like us to have defied statistics and push through boundaries to get to where they are today. Thank you for being the shoulders we stand on to achieve our black excellence. Dr. Christina Kyle Smith is currently the executive director of Two Rivers Public Charter Schools. This network of high-performing public schools in Washington, D.C. has a mighty mission to nurture a diverse group of students to become lifelong active participants in their education. In collaboration with her team, Dr. Christina strives to ensure all students develop a sense of self and community and become responsible and compassionate members of their society. Dr. Kyle Smith was raised in Holland, Michigan, by activist parents who owned and operated a community outreach center 
a black culture center, and a church. Through her parents, Dr. Kyle Smith fostered a love of learning and a commitment to her community. She received her bachelor's from Hope College and a master's from Simmons College. She received her doctorate in educational leadership from Cambridge College and Cambridge, Massachusetts, completing her dissertation in historically black school's ability to educate black students and sustain powerful black communities. Throughout her career, Dr. Kyle Smith has served in several roles in public education, amassing a wealth of diverse educational leadership experience. These roles include teacher, district director of equity, and the district curriculum director in the state of Massachusetts. She has also served as a public school principal and assistant state superintendent of education in Maryland. Nationally, Dr. Kyle Smith supported school transformation and equity as a regional director of EL Education. Dr. Kyle Smith now lives in Baltimore County, Maryland with her husband, Lauren Smith, a nationally ranked high school football coach and an urban school police detective. She has three children who bring her joy and keep her grounded. She's active in several professional associations, such as the National Alliance of Black School Educators and the Association for Supervision and Curriculum Development. She remains committed to community service and serves as an executive member of the Harbor City Links Incorporated and an active member of her local NAACP. And with that, Dr. Kyle Smith, on behalf of the Hope College Black Student Union, we present you with the Kuji Shagulia Alumni Excellence Award. Good evening, Madam Jonas, Hope College Black Student Union members, Ms. Green, Dr. Trent Brown, and President Scoggins. It is an honor to join you this evening, and I am so grateful and humbled by this award. I am most excited about being able to join you all tonight to collectively reflect on the reciprocal impact of Black excellence at Hope College. See, I remember as a young girl, a middle school student, joining both formal and informal BSU events at Hope with my mentor, who was a big sister's big brother's mentor. It was all inspiring to see their power, the power and impact of college students. And it was only a few years later that I too was drawn to apply to and awarded a scholarship to Hope through Project Teach. Of course, shortly thereafter joining as a student, I went to join leadership at BSU. Activism at Hope was transformational to me. I am humbled by the recognition of my work. I consider this work a life's work, a journey. And my service and my commitment to educational equity has roots in the social justice and racial activism that I garnered from my family right there in Holland, Michigan. It was with them that I learned the power of being simply a supportive neighbor. By joining my parents as they worked to take care of the community which often included Hope College students of color, I learned that this was just doing to others as you want to do unto yourself. Didn't seem like a big deal. I was just looking out for my community, who in turn often looked out for me. Yet when I moved from Holland to Boston after college to start my career, I left my community. And that was for the first time I was no longer in this protective uh, town called Holland, Michigan. Now, this is something that many of you may have already um, come to terms with just by going to Hope. But as a native of Holland, I only traveled from 16th Street to 13th Street when moving into my freshman dorm. As I started my career in education, the impact of systemic racism became more clear. I love my community. I love Holland. And I quickly realized that I, as a student at Holland Public Schools, had experienced abuse and racism through bias. I found that the white supremacy that is deeply ingrained in the US was embedded in the foundations of Hope College. And both those experiences created deep wounds that would continue to be reopened throughout my journey and in, throughout my work to support educational equity. It seemed like everywhere I turned, the footprint of hatred and bias and greed fed a caste system that was ultimately aiming a cannon straight at me. 
However, for every oppression, I found an outlet or a strategic inroad I could use to help me gain traction to combat those inequitable practices. And through that, which was there because of the work of those who had came before me, I gained agency in joining the fight. Many of those outlets, hope had seeded themselves, and for that I'm grateful. See, I had never even had an African-American history professor until I came to Hope and met the esteemed Dr. Fred Johnson. I had never sat in front of an African-American female teacher until I took the class from Professor Jennifer Tate, rest in peace, a woman who I continue to hold her as a model of grace and excellence in academia. I found community in the Phelps Scholars Program and my closest friends are those that I met right there at Hope College. And even to this day, we continue to coalesce around issues of active activism and our commitment to equality. Those attributes which we hone together right at Hope College. Hope is a part of my Kuji Chakulia. And since leaving, I've continued the fight for educational equity. It has not been easy, but it has been amazing, rewarding, and I hope productive. So my advice, build and be you. The most powerful wins come when you work to challenge and then beat your own self. My advice, build your stance and protect your integrity so that you can stand even when you're tired. My advice, speak up. Or in the words of John Lewis, go make good trouble. If you have told me that I'd be standing here humbly, virtually, accepting this award, 16 years ago after graduating from Hope College, I would have told you that you were way too kind. So let me say, you are way too kind. And Madam President Jonas, please let's keep in touch. I'd love to stay connected. I can see your brilliance even beaming through, our, through your correspondence. Thank you for this recognition. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for the continued strategic inroads. And thank you for the reciprocal nature in building Black excellence and continuing that legacy at Hope College. Tonight, our theme is Blackness Visible, a celebration of Black excellence. As we continue to honor our distinguished alumni and all the accomplishments that they've had, let us take a second here to recognize the barriers that they've pushed through, the statistics that they've defied, and their unique ability to reach back and propel the next generation forward. They have shown resilience, succeeding in a world that has grown too comforting for white culture. And so tonight we continue by honoring Dr. Jessica Parker. Dr. Jessica Parker is now a neurologist who specializes in headache and facial pains while teaching medical students at the University of Cincinnati. Before she became a neurologist, she worked as a general neurologist for two years in North Carolina before deciding to go to school to specialize in headache medicine. She is originally from Rochester Hills, Michigan. She began her journey at Hope College majoring in biology and on the pre-med track as well. During her years at Hope, she was extremely involved. She was a Covenant Scholar, a Phelps Scholar, the BSU Secretary, and a founding and presidential member of the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. After graduating from Hope College in 2007, she went to Michigan State University Medical School, then went on to do neurology resident at the University of Cincinnati. Later on, she married her husband, Delatin Parker, who also is a Hope graduate, and has a seven-year-old son named Cameron. Therefore, on the behalf of Hope College Black Student Union, we also present Dr. Jessica Parker, the Kucha Gula, Alumni Excellent Award. Hi everyone, my name is Jessica Parker and I am happy and honored to receive one of the Black Alumni Excellence Awards tonight. So thank you to the Black Student Union for choosing me for this honor. Um, a little bit about me and uh, my Hope College experience. I have very fond memories of Hope, but then I have a few rocky <laughs> memories of Hope, especially at the beginning. I remember my parents dropping me off and me thinking, 
where am I? What's going on at this place? Please come back and pick me up. But um, they did not, despite my crying for a few weeks. And I'm happy that they left me there. I was able to sort of settle in and dig my roots down and find my village. Um, a pivotal place for that was the Scott was Scott Hall, um, the Phelps Scholars Program with Dr. Chuck Green. Um, it just was. It allowed us to have a community of like-minded people um, where you could feel comfortable. Unfortunately, at a predominantly white institution, sometimes there are places where you just don't feel welcome or you don't really feel appreciated. Um, and Scott Hall was gave us a sense of belonging and home. And so I'm very appreciative of that. Um, also, the Office of Multicultural Life was also huge um, with creating a place of belonging and foundation uh, for, for the students of color. Uh, Vanessa Green was amazing. She was putting on a lot of different programs to help bring in more diversity to Hope College and, and just to foster inclusion within the college campus. Uh, so I have very fond memories of working closely with her in the Office of Multicultural Life. Um, a quote that comes to mind um, when I think about Hope College is grow where you are planted. So Hope College was not a part of my master plan. Um, I remember being in high school and always saying, I'm going to be a doctor, I'm going to go to U University of Michigan, and then I'm going to go to med school and become a doctor. And that was just my plan. I applied, I got in, I was like, this is where I'm going. And then one day, I was being loud in the library with my girlfriends, and a Hope College recruiter came up to us and said, do you guys know about Hope College? Can I tell you a little bit about it? And then talk to us about scholarships that um, they offer where you could have your tuition completely covered. So knowing that I was going to wanted to go to med school and that was going to be um, a huge financial burden, I said, well, if this is a place where I could potentially get a scholarship and it's a good school, let me look into it. I ended up applying and coming, interviewing for um, the Covenant Scholarship. And uh, before we even made it back home to Rochester Hills, Michigan, they were calling me and telling me you got it. And, you know, we want to see you at Hope College. So it wasn't a part of my plan, but God had other plans and it worked out. Um, it really did. I, Hope College is where I met the love of my life. My boo, my husband, um, Felton Parker, he's class of 2008. Um, so we've been together since uh, 2004. And then we got married, been married um, for the last eight years. And we have a son, um, Cameron Parker. He is this little energetic seven-year-old. So um, great things did come out of Hope College. And I think it took some time for me to step back and say, okay, this is not what I thought it was, but how can I make this situation the best? And how can I leave a legacy for other people who are coming behind me, especially students of color? So definitely just um, dig in, get involved, be active, be positive, and just grow where you are planted. Um, so again, I just want to thank you all for giving me uh, the the alumni excellence award tonight and i also did want to mention if there are any students out there who are looking for a mentor you're interested in the science field or you're interested in the pre medicine medicine route um, definitely get a hold of danae and i will give her all my contact information i would love to be a resource for you um, just to help guide you through your journey so again thank you all and have a good night the concept of Sankofa is derived from King Adin Kara of the Akan people of West Africa. Literally translated, this means it is not taboo to go back and fetch what you forgot. Sankofa teaches us that we must go back to our roots in order to move forward. That is, we should reach back and gather the best of what our past has to teach us so that we can achieve our full potential as we move forward. Whatever we have lost, forgotten, forgone, or been stripped of can be reclaimed, revived, preserved, and perpetuated. Visually and symbolically, Sankofa is expressed as a mythical bird that flies forward while looking backward with an egg, symbolizing the future in its mouth. This ties with our motto, in order to understand our present and ensure our future, we must know our past. The beloved Vanessa Green has demonstrated the important standards of Sankofa during her time in higher education and uh, leadership as a shining example of black excellence and success to all of us students here at Hope College. Ms. Green has been involved and influential in part of things and continues to leave her mark in the world wherever she goes. She firstly received a bachelor's degree in criminal justice and a 
master's degree in higher education at Grand Valley State University. Prior to coming to Hope, she worked and continuing her education at Grand Valley State University for several years and also had an experience in vocational rehabilitation as an entrepreneur. She spent 17 years at Hope College empowering students, developing a community and a sense of belonging for students, especially those of color, along with faculty and staff. As Associate Dean of Students and the Director of the Center for Diversity and Inclusion, she was responsible for the strategic vision, planning and implementation of diversity, equity, and inclusion at Hope College, and also developed a curriculum for a diversity institute and taught a cultural diversity interdisciplinary class. She also led numbers of initiatives like Leadership Empowerment Program, where students were able to get fundings through many corporations like Armand Miller, Spectrum Health, and our Marketing Bank to go to conferences and graduate school. And overall, to support the students, uh, divert students' population at Hope College. She was also responsible for chairing a 12-member racial com uh, equity chairing committee, committee to bring uh, greater awareness to uh, issues of systemic and structural racism, as well as to bring about um, hope, uh, change at Hope College. She also served in several campuses, boarders, and uh, committee to promote academic excellence, uh, spiritual growth, leadership uh, development, and uh, social justice on campus. It is clear that she is truly the heart and soul of Hope College, especially for students of color, and has touched many, many lives, including my own. From the minute I met her for the first time my freshman year, I truly felt empowered and had a close relationship with her ever since. She always found any way to support you, whether that be emotionally, physically, academically. She was always there without a question. Yet, as we know, this will be her last semester working at Hope College as she has moved on to the next point in her life of being the CEO of the Grand Rapids African American Health Institute, where she will be working on the equitable access to health care for all West Michigan residents, despite the color of their skin. During these times today, she is especially working on the disproportionate impact COVID has had on the African American community and has been continuing to advocate. We wish you all the best at this new endeavor of your life, and we thank you for your support and wisdom. As you always thought about us, now it's time for us to think about you. So now we present you with the faculty second for our word. Good evening. I must say that I was not expecting this award, but I want to thank the Knight Jonas and Black Student Union for thinking of me in this way as it is truly an honor to receive the Sankofa Faculty Black Excellence Award. I have watched this program grow in excellence over the years, and I could not be more proud of Black Student Union. Yes, you guys rock. I also want to congratulate uh, Dr. Jessica Parker and Thelson Parker, as well as Dr. Christina Kyles Smith. You guys chose excellent recipients for this award, and um, I'm just very excited to be sharing this platform with them. The Sankofa Faculty Teaching Excellence Award is especially an honor to me because Sankofa is near and dear to my heart, and I also love teaching. For those of you who may not be aware of the term Sankofa, let me explain. Sankofa is a word derived from the Akan tribe of Ghana, which means looking back at the past to guide our future and bring others along with us. The Sankofa symbol is a mystical bird, which I am wearing on my necklace. You can see this bird. Uh, this is the Sankofa symbol. And um, so as you, can, as you can see, the feet are firmly planted and the beak is tilted backwards. And uh, so it essentially represents, the feet represents strength and the power to move ahead. And then the beak is to not forget where we came from and to also bring others forward along with us. This essentially represents me my family and everything I have seen my mother's aunts, uncles, cousins, and friends do. Each of them have reached back and given tirelessly 
to members of the black community, even when they had very little to give. Essentially, it represents the black culture as we are always about Sankofa, lifting each other up and bringing each other along. One of the most pivotal experiences in my life was my first year of college when I could not have felt more insecure and lost. The only black professor I had, I think he was only one of two professors at Grand Valley State University at the time, uh, by the name of Dr. Jimmy Walker, reached out to me after my third day of class and said, Miss Green, can you stay after class a few minutes? And I said, of course, sure. I was excited to be invited to stay after class. Uh, he planted seeds of affirmation and encouragement in me that made me feel affirmed, special, and confident. I later found out that he did that to every black student in his class, which was important to us because most of us were first generation students and did not have anyone else who could provide that level of encouragement, support and affirmation to us. And that was not the only thing that he did throughout our um, four years of college. He supported, encouraged and, and actually fathered us throughout our experience at uh, Grand Valley. And I am sure that someone else did it for him and he saw it as his responsibility to bring others along with him. It gave me the confidence to pledge Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. And this is one of uh, my life-changing experiences as it provided opportunities for me to go to uh, national conferences and conventions and meet incredible people. At each of these events, there were over 100,000 um, successful black women who walked and stood and presented with the utmost confidence uh, in ways that I had never seen before. One of the things that stood out most to me was that each conference and convention, previous uh, national presidents attended and, and sat on the, the, the platform. And uh, they were very intentional about meeting the undergraduate students, embracing us and supporting and encouraging us during our time at these uh, events. And, uh, and this too, allowed me opportunities and allowed my friends opportunities, sorority sisters, um, to see life and opportunities in ways that we had not uh, imagined before. It also allowed us the opportunity or encouraged us to work harder in every aspect of our lives. I ended up graduating with honors. Dr. Walker attended the celebration and was as proud of me as any father could have been of his child. This is why it's important to have diverse faculty and administrators on college campuses who care about and contribute to the experiences of students of color. We don't need uh, faculty and administrators who do the same uh, thing as white professors as that doesn't help the students, the needs of students struggling on predominantly on predominantly white campuses. I'm gonna repeat that and I hope you guys can edit this. This is why it is important to have diverse faculty and administrators. Let me do that again. This is why it is important to have diverse faculty and administrators on college campuses who care about the needs of students of color. As we don't need people who do the same thing uh, as white professors, as that doesn't help the needs of students struggling on predominantly white campuses. So I challenge Hope to do its job in increasing diversity leadership on campus, but I also encourage the diverse faculty to remember the shoulders you're standing on, look back and bring students along with you. Throughout my time at Hope College, I have countless students thank me for the role I have played in their lives. Well, as you can see, much was poured in my life. And trust me, these are limited examples as there are plenty, plenty more. But the point is that many people reach back to bring me forward and I have tried to do the same. It is my hope that you will do so as well. There are times in our lives when we feel we are not fulfilling our deepest 
potential. I felt that way at hope often, but God said, be still. And I remained still until he said it was time to move on, not realizing he was preparing me to become the chief executive officer of the Grand Rapids African American Health Institute. God told me many years ago that he had a big platform for me, but I am relatively low key. So a big platform is not something I aspire to. But when God have a plan for our lives, he will create the opportunity and equip us to succeed in it. In the past three months, many doors have been open. I'm invited to give presentations and speak on panels at least once per week and work with local, state, and national government officials, as well as healthcare systems and co community leaders on issues related to social determinants of health and health equity. The funding and sponsorship support has been encouraging. The level of support across the board has been incredible, and I know this is just the beginning of what God has in store for the Grand Rapids African American Health Institute. So I say to you, do not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season, you will certainly reap if you don't give up. Lastly, I would like to leave you with some words of advice. Uh, first one is the purpose of education is not intended to only serve you and your goals in life. The biggest purpose of education is to, to improve the lives of others and leave your community and world better than you found it. Success is important, but look back often and remember the shoulders you are standing on. Be kind and bring others with you. Don't ever settle for average. Whatever you do, do it with excellence. Understanding that excellence is a habit is not an act. When your name is mentioned, be known for kindness and excellence, and believe me, these two things will take you far in life. Some things you may want to improve or achieve that you may never experience the end result, but keep pushing for them and keep fighting for them as if your life depends on it. For example, Dr. Kyle saw a need for a black sorority at Hope College and advocated for Delta Sigma Theta. She was the leader of all the background work and history of the organization. She worked tirelessly to make this happen, but graduated a year before we were able to feel, fulfill her dream. Dr. Jessica Parker was a recipient of her hard work and was one of the founding charter members along with seven other charter members, including Dr. Tiffany Laban, who is one of the chairs of the recently established Black Alumni Advisory Council. Prior to leaving Hope, President Skogan approved a standalone building for the Center for Diversity and Inclusion, something I had worked on for years and many had advocated for it long before me. I never got to experience life in the new building, nor did any of the others, but it was never about me or them. The goal was to make the community for students of color better than we found it. My hope is that you will make it your purpose to look back and bring others with you and make the world better than you found it. Again, thank you for this great honor. It means a lot to me and I will truly and I will truly cherish it. Thank you. Here we go again with the battle of matters of skin, the battle that no one wins except blood, death, the sin. Now I will admit, I'm afraid to submit the blue outfits. I legit had nightmares I have in my life, taken for being mistaken as a ghetto crook in the making. You suffocated with hate, George Floyd, but you healed. But now it's real when you kill down the Capitol Hill, you hypocrite, now tell me what's the deal. We tried a peaceful protest, but then you sit in the test. We turn the flames up from average, then you label a savage. Throughout history, you were having trouble making a man. You fed us as the culture, but then you take him with mine. You want us to change, but then you yourself refuse to. The only way to change, let it happen inside of you. I said the only way to change, let it happen inside of you. We were torn from each other like paper masks, not knowing they launched us into new beginnings. Black death, how did we become so complex? Adorned with the same faces, hair type, and skin, but our language, culture, and traditions differ. Even across continents, we are connected like kin. 
from countries we consider our mother's arms extended across the sphere, settled in variety, from the vast cityscapes to small hidden farms. We are Afro-Caribbean, ancestry settled on islands forced to cultivate cane till they rose up in arms. Other nations followed hearing of such rebellion. See, we've been fighting for a while. Somebody please tell them. Haiti, Jamaica, Trinidad, Guyana, St. Vincent, St. Lucia, Belize, and Grenada. Walking towards our other tribes because we've been strewn across continents. Travel up towards the center. Guatemala, Honduras, Costa Rica to Brazil, where my Afro-Latinos speak sweet words covering the mountains, valleys, and hills. Though the scars exist on the surface, we have deep ancestry. Allow me to introduce you to African identity. We all come from one sweet mother. She can provide the world with everything. She's truly like no other. They say the ruin of a nation begins in the homes of its people. What happens when the people were subjected to evil, but they rise and built their own sequel? Our deepest secrets are richer than the skin we are in. Our differences do not make us less than far from God's grace or embodiments of sin. And the words we speak run farther than the mountaintops we journeyed from. We walk in the footsteps of ancestors, creating paths where roads should never exist. Extended from the shadows of bondage, we are bigger than those ships we were tarried from. Bigger than the shackles of old we wear as tattoos of new, we are Black history. For this we know to be true. I hope you all have enjoyed this evening. I know I absolutely have, despite not being able to see you guys all physically here tonight. I want to thank you all so much for continuing to come and support our organization. It means a lot to us. The fact that you guys all still decided to join us virtually tonight to honor our school's black excellence says so much about how the support for the Black Student Union has grown and shows us how much respect and recognition we are gaining. Most importantly, it demonstrates that the community sees us and sees the importance of space like this. We also have many specific thank yous to those who have made tonight happen. We would like to thank the CDI with Margot and Javon and their support with helping making this event happen, Ms. Green for still helping us coordinate this event as she works at Grah High, our award recipients for taking the time to be a part of this event and telling us their stories, Houston Patton, Taylor Calloway, and Taylor Reeves for performing for us, Campus Ministries for allowing us to use this space, Kaylee and Freddie from Video Services for helping us film this amidst their busy schedules, and last but certainly not least is my executive board. This event could not have happened without every single one of you, and you have all played a crucial role in making this night happen. Thank you so much for supporting me as a leader and spreading your light on Hope's campus. So again, thank you guys all very much for coming, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your night. Have a blessed night.